Hello, what an incredible week this will be and weekend that it has been. Welcome to Morgan Sankofa. Today I will be reading Tracy K. Smith, Wade in the Water. And I am also wearing my grandfather's hat today. And today's going to be a special reading, a special video. So I hope that you stay and watch a little bit. So Tracy K. Smith's Portrait of America is a devastating must-read. Wade in the Water deftly covers 250 years of the American experience, from the refugees' plight to a company's toxic spill to the complications of Black motherhood. Chinaka Hodge from Mother Jones. The first poem is called Wade in the Water for the Geechee Gullah Ring Shouters. One of the women greeted me. I love you, she said. She didn't know me, but I believed her. And a terrible new ache rolled over my chest. Like in a room where the drapes have swept back. I love you. I love you. As she continued down the hall past other strangers, each failing pierced suddenly by the pillars of heavy light. I love you throughout the performance. In every hand clap, every stomp, I love you in the rusted iron chains someone was made to drag until love let them be unclapped and left empty in the center of the ring. I love you in the water where they pretended to wade, singing that old blood deep song that dragged us to those banks and cast us in. I love you, the angles of it scraping at each throat shouldering past the swirling dust motes in those beams of light that whatever we now knew we could let ourselves feel new to climb oh woods oh dogs oh tree oh gun oh girl run oh mir miraculous many gone oh lord oh lord oh lord is this love the trouble you promised the next one is called, The United States Welcomes You. Why and by whose power were you sent? What do you see that you may wish to steal? Why this dancing? Why do your dark bodies drink up all of the light? Why are you demanding that we feel? Have you stolen something? Then what is that leaping in your chest? What is the nature of your mission? Do you seek to offer confession? Have you anything to do with others brought by us to harm? Then why are you afraid? Why do you invade our night? Hands raised, eyes wide, mute as ghosts. Is there anything you wish to confess? Is this some enigmatic type of test? What if we fail? How and to whom do we address our appeal? I really like this one, um, page 62 called Ash. Strange house we must keep and fill. House that eats and pleads and kills. House on legs, house on fire. House infested with desire. Haunted house, lonely house. House of trick and suck and shrug. Give it to me house, I need you baby house. House whose rooms are pooled with blood. House with hands, house of guilt. House that other houses built. House of lies and pride and bone. House afraid to be alone. House like an engine that churns and stalls. House with skin and hair for walls. House the seasons singe and douse. House that believes it's not a house. The last one I'm going to read is called The Everlasting Self. It comes in from a downpour, shaking water in every direction. A collaborative condition, gathered, shed, spread, then forgotten, reabsorbed, like love from a lifetime ago, and mud a dog has tracked across the floor. Okay, so now I'm going to take off my grandfather's hat. And um, 
I wanted to read something that I wrote about um, Wade in the Water, the book. And um, here it is. Reading Wade in the Water shows the power of the written word, the creative genius and spirit of the questioned and abused. Some fleeing danger or deserving better, while others stolen, scattered, and holding on to dignity. Smith weaves how families have changed in the black community. Her daughter, so antsy to get what she wants and so focused on what could be instead of what is. It's a step back, sharing how slaves couldn't write, but they knew they needed protection, money, and their basic needs like health. It also showed the tricks that were taken to steal the money from, from unable to read blacks, like changing their names. Smith shows how immigrants are not questioned, but cornered and obviously profiled by skin color and cultural differences. She talks about spiritual rebirth through carrying on passions and everyday happenings of those who have passed, but we loved. Um, and I wanted to end with just some of my thoughts about loss and um, how um, I've been dealing with um, a few losses, but recently losing my grandfather, and that's why I was wearing his hat at the beginning. Um, and there's different ways that we can cope with that. Um, and um, for me, the good thing is that um, I live in the neighborhood where he would be around and um, Sometimes I drive past the gas station that he would go to all the time, frequent all the time. And, you know, I feel like you can always have a conversation with spirit, um, people that have had spiritual ties to the earth. And um, I just say, like, they pop up, like, <laughs> when I drive past and um, I feel connected. And because I know that what I where I go and um, the places that I go, I'm always, um, I haven't done it, I haven't been the first to do it. And um, it's beautiful, it's, it's sad in some ways, um, because of course, especially this year, losing so many people so quickly, um, and also so, um, you know, it's always violently, but, um, it's very, um, it's triggering people, and I see a lot of people either, like, really shutting down, feeling, um, very, um, rebellious, <laughs> um, or just lost, and, um, I feel like, it's easy to be that way, and I feel like I've been in all, all of the whole spectrum, and I'm sure you all have too. Um, but I feel like grieving is, um, it's it's natural, and um, I feel like what's the most important right now is to let everyone know that any way that you feel, if you're frustrated, just don't be hard on yourself. Um, I think that's the easiest impulse to be hard on yourself, but, um, I think that taking the harder way out and just holding on tight to yourself and just knowing that no matter what, you have yourself and, um, you are everybody that you've lost if that makes sense you you are you always are rooted and belong to your family and um you you belong here i feel like that's a word that needed to come out you belong here even in the midst of all of this confusion i think somebody needs to hear that <laughs> so um with that being said, this was a special video to me. Um, I wanted to honor my grandfather and um, do that through reading Tracy K. Smith, which talked about how um, 
slaves came to the country. Well, wow. Slaves were taken to this country. And also um, about the process to get, um, that immigrants have to face to get into the country. So I would definitely recommend reading Tracy K. Smith. She's a professor at Princeton. So, okay. Have a great week and I hope to see you soon.